Welcome back. I am the Electrical Code Coach from electricalexamcoach.com, and this is the question of the day. Let's get to it. Do GFCIs need a ground wire to function? The options were true or false. And the correct answer is false. Let's take a look at it. For us to understand GFCI technology, we need to first understand this basic principle, that if we can measure one amp of current on the hot wire, we will also be able to measure one amp of current coming back on the neutral wire. It's amazing. And that's why GFCIs work so well, because electricity is truly predictable. Let's imagine in this scenario that I've got some Christmas lights here in Florida. I'm outside, I'm hooking them up with the kids, I'm barefoot, that'll make sense in a minute. And I plug some in and I've got exactly one amp's worth. I can take my amp clamp out, whip it around the hot, I measure one amp, I can also measure around the neutral and I'll get one amp. But let's imagine that I go to plug in the next string and I'm using extension cords how I shouldn't be and I plug it in and there is actually a nick in that wire. Well that, and it's the hot wire. Well, that is actually going to flow through me, through my bare feet, through the earth, trying to get back to the source. Now, remember, electricity doesn't flow to the earth, but it will flow through the earth in the attempt to go back to the source. It's always trying to get back to where it came from. With that being said, let's imagine in this fake scenario that there is now 0.2 additional amps flowing through me, adding that load to the hot, and that 0.2 amps is trying to flow back to the earth. Well, what the neutral is not going to see is also that 0.2 amps and additional load. It'll see the original one amp of the load in this perfectly balanced situation for our illustration. But what it sees now is a difference. And that's what a GFCI is doing. It's constantly measuring the difference between the hot and the neutral or the current flowing through the hot and the neutral to make sure that there is no difference. So if I've got one amp coming in the, on the hot, I better have one amp going back on the neutral. And if the current raises above a certain point and that is not flowing back on the neutral, it'll actually shut off. Well, you might ask the question, at what point does it trip? Well, a class A GFCI device is set to trip at no more than six milliamps. A milliamp is one one thousandth of an amp. So six milliamps is six one thousandths of an amp. Well, in this case, there's 0.2 amps flowing back on me. And that, that would actually be 200 milliamps. And that's more than enough to kill you. That's why we need GFCI technology. In this scenario, the 0.2 amps would flow through me, through the earth, and immediately that GFCI would shut off. It doesn't limit the amount of current that I'm shocked by, but it does limit how long it happens. And that's what ends up saving my life. They settled on uh, no greater than six milliamps because the average human can let go of AC current at around that range. And it's also long before the range of the internal uh, health issues that you receive from higher current shocks for longer durations. You start having heart troubles, then you'll literally start cooking from the inside out. So that's what a GFCI does, and it needs no ground wire to function. If I've got one amp coming in on the hot, I better have one amp coming back on the neutral. Now, let me say this about the ground wire. It could be one of those unintended paths that current takes back to the source, and the GFCI would function as well, but it's just not needed. There are many paths that the current could try to take back to the source. It could try to take the earth. It could try to go through water. It could try it, that is connected to the earth that's or that's connected in another way to the source. But it can take many and lots of paths. One of them being possibly the equipment grounding conductor or other bonded metal parts. Anytime that current is flowing not back on the neutral after it did come in on the hot, that is when it's going to shut off. I am the Electrical Code Coach, and my bargain is that these videos will add value to you, and you will in turn add value to others. Let's get to it.